Talking about Bob Searle and other people that know him much better than I, but I had the I had the honour and the privilege of um, having her as one of my first patients when I started general practice in Redfern in 1972, and because of her, she. Uh, she got all the Aboriginal patients from Cowra and everywhere else to come to see me, and uh, <laughs> I, I just, it was an honour and a privilege, and um, I can't, I don't know what to say about that. Basically, I'm Cheryl, and I became close in a, in a professional way. Um, I've treated her for over 20 years uh, for various things and I've become very close to her uh, activities and she really was a saint. Um, she was involved in the Aboriginal Medical Service at an early stage and I was one of the first doctors there and she, she said, why aren't you down at the medical service? We better get you down there. And, and of course, uh, of course, Shirley, of course, I'm sorry. Yeah. And so, you know, he never, dis never disagreed with Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, it was a privilege to be involved in the, in the very early years and, and consequently. Uh, she was a, a hero. She was um, a lady who didn't have a didn't have to feed her own personality. She just went on and did whatever she thought was appropriate. As the gentleman said, he had chaired one of these um, badges, which allowed her to go and visit uh, the, the prison, and I used to go with her. And whenever there was any strife in Redfern, in Redfern Street, uh, the police were trying to give uh, somebody a hard time. She just used to whip it out and said, Officer? I've got a, I've got a badge. You know what you're talking to? <laughs> Please stop what you're doing right now. <laughs> and the officer just sort of <laughs> disappeared. They like a badge, you know. <laughs> and so, consequently, she used to use it very frequently. It was a position of power. <laughs> um, it, it was very hard to say no to Shirley. Uh, basically, I used to drive her around. We used to go down to Father uh, Ted Kennedy's place. Uh, a lot uh, when there were some people down there and uh, when people were in trouble and uh, it was she taught me everything I know she taught me how to uh, have an attitude towards people less well off than yourself and I thank you for her I thank her for that um, basically um, I looked after her pretty cool and until I finished work in the Fair, which is about a year before she died and passed on and um, it was a terrible time uh, to see her dementing because she was su such a highly intelligent <coughs> and high, high IQ person. To see her deteriorate was a bit of a, it was a, it was very melancholy. As is for me to look around here today. But anyway, I think it's important that we should remember her as the person who she was and we should have we should buy some real estate where we can get all her belongings. So that it's, a, it's a permanent situation where everybody can congregate together at, at different times. And her memory will never fade. Thank you. This is about enough. <laughs>